Hello and welcome to Katzer's Classes. This is the first in a tutorial series that I'm starting to put together with the objective that as I start releasing more video pattern tutorials, I want them to be accessible to anybody. So anybody who has never crocheted before, uh, beginner levels, anybody of any skill range, I would like them to have the tools to be able to make any pattern I release. So for today's video, we're going to be going over some of the like the basic, basic fundamentals of crochet. So starting off patterns, how to chain stitches, how to make a magic circle, how to um, you know just make your slip knot in the first place, and like bare minimum, if you have never picked up crochet before, you have found yourself in the right place. We're going to start learning together. So let's give it a go. Okay, so there are two main foundations you need to learn for crocheting. You can work in rows or you can work in the round. Uh, working in the round can be a little tricky, so we will start off practicing with a row. And this starts with a simple slip knot. This may be something that you have done before, but basically you make that loop. You pull the loop th through and nice and tight. This is the kind of loop that can just um, open up or pull closed tight. Uh, so again, one more time, that's just kind of, I like to do it so around the finger, so you cross in front, and then you take that bottom end, the, the leading strand, and you push it through the loop you just made, and pull. Okay, so once you have a slip knot, you're ready to insert your crochet hook through that loop, and again, this is where you can pull it nice and tight. So you want to make sure you are working with your leading strand of yarn, the side connected to the ball of yarn and not this, this loose end. Common mistake, certainly with beginners, I did it plenty. And to work in a row, the first thing you need to do is to chain stitches. So chaining is pretty simple. You take your leading strand of yarn, you wrap it around the hook, and you pull that loop through the first loop that was on your hook. And that is one chain. So again, you get one loop on your hook, you pull it, you know, nice and tight-ish. Uh, the more kind of slack you have there, the bigger your loops are gonna be. They're hard to control if they're too big, um, but you don't want them really, really tight either. So just try and have it kind of, you know, close. Yarn goes around, pulls through. And so yeah, this is chaining. Anytime you're working in the round, a lot of patterns just start off by telling you how many to chain. Um, so you just keep repeating that same motion again and again until you have as many chains as you need. Okay, and so now to work in the round, you need to learn how to do something called a magic circle. Now these can be a little bit tricky to learn, but they are super useful once you get the hang of them. They're the only thing you really use in amigurumi. They're awesome. So what you're going to do is you're going to take that, the end of your yarn, and you're going to go from in front of your hand, you're going to wrap it back around your finger once and twice. And then I use my middle finger just to help hold it in place while I work. You're going to insert your hook under that first wrap around to pull the second one through. And then at this point, I like to just use my thumb to, to hold up our leading thread or our leading yarn for a bit of tension here. And you're going to hook that leading strand and pull it through. And then you're going to go through the loop that is on your finger to pull another loop through, yarn over, and through. And that is your first stitch. Uh, whenever you see magic rings written into patterns it'll always say a number so like six in magic ring six or sorry like eight in magic circle magic ring and magic circle are used interchangeably and at this point once you have a full first stitch it's definitely a bit more stable you can take your finger out and you're not going to lose your loop um, and so however many you need to do we're going to repeat that same way by going through our ring or our circle pulling the leading strand through yarn over and through both and now we have two in our magic circle and you just keep repeating that process until you have however many your pattern calls for all right and then once you have however many you need so i've got four here let's say we're shooting for four 
the thing that makes this ring magic, and how you know you've done your, your magic circle correctly, is that you can take the tail, and when you pull on it, your ring should close up. So it's just your stitches now, and the ring is uh, all closed, the hole's gone, and at this point, you can kind of pull it back open if you realize you forgot some stitches, but it should just close up nice and neat. And then from there, once you've closed it, the way you do working around, instead of turning and going back the way you came, you literally just work like around. So your next stitch would just go into this first stitch. You just kind of connect straight across and you work from there. Now the last foundation I want to show you is kind of a combination of the two that we just learned. And this is when you want to work in the round, but you don't actually want a closed end with a magic circle. You want it open-ended, more like a, like a cylinder or a tube. So to do this, you start by chaining, again, however many your pattern calls for. So I've chained some here. And then all that happens is that you literally just bend it into a circle and you start working uh, kind of across that, that bridge as opposed to turning and going around. And then quite simply, you know, from here, you just make whatever stitches and it's now a closed up circle. And from there, you just keep working in the round. Uh, now the only tricky th part about this, the one thing you really gotta watch out for when you're doing this type of foundation, is just to make sure that you're keeping everything perfectly straight and, and flat. If you end up twisting your chain, um, you are stuck like that and it cannot be fixed without undoing it. It can be ignored. Uh, <laughs> it can be ignored, but it can't be fixed. So you just want to be really, you know, paying close attention, making it nice and flat. And I do find it can be useful to, to sometimes make that connection. Um, kind of just like with your fingers, like make that loop and make sure it looks right. And you know exactly where you're inserting your hook. Um, otherwise, you know, if you're just, if you're just holding it, and uh, you know, going around, it's very easy to accidentally twist it. So yeah, that's the last one. Um, I like to use this when I'm making things like legs, for example. So also super handy to know. So there you go. You can do everything that we have just gone over in this video. You can make the foundation for, as far as I'm concerned, any pattern, certainly any pattern that I'm gonna make. These are the ways that I start all of them. Um, it may not feel like you did a whole lot because there's not a lot that you can do with a foundation without knowing how to actually do crochet stitches, but fear not, there's a part two of this introductions to crochet kind of mini series and uh, you'll be able to click through and you can head straight there and start crocheting straight into the foundations that you just made. So keep going. Uh, you are doing amazing so far.